A king once came to see the Buddha in the middle of the day. And the Buddha asked him, What have you been up to? And the king was remarkably frank. He said, The typical things of people obsessed with power. It's hard to imagine politicians admitting that today. And the Buddha asked him, suppose a reliable person came from the east and said there was a huge mountain moving in from the east, crushing all living beings in his path. And suppose another person came from the south, a reliable person, with the same report, a huge mountain moving in from the south, crushing all living beings in his path. Another person from the west with the same news, another person from the north. Altogether, four mountains moving in. And in the face of all this destruction of life, realizing how hard it is to find a human life, what would you do? And the king said, well, what else can I do but calm my mind and practice the Dharma? So the Buddha went on to inform him. I tell you, aging, illness, and death are moving in, crushing all living beings in their path. What are you going to do? And the king said, well, what else can I do but calm my mind and practice the Dharma? This is a good reflection to keep in mind in times of danger, in times of fear. To remind ourselves we're always living in danger. It's simply that we tend to get complacent. And then when danger comes and we're aware of it, we tend to lose our wits. We don't think straight. We think that because things are dangerous, we have to take special measures. They're really not reasonable. The reason is realizing the dangers are all around us all the time, and that we have to behave well in spite of the dangers. Or you might say we have to behave well, practice the Dharma because of the dangers. If we don't practice the Dharma, we're going to suffer. If we do practice the Dharma, we won't suffer, no matter how bad the situation is outside, how bad the situation is in our bodies, because we make the situation in our minds skillful. This is the message of the Buddha's teachings, that for all the trouble there is in the world outside, the real trouble that weighs down the mind comes from within. When the Buddha analyzes suffering, he gives a long list of things that are familiar to all of us, aging, illness, death, separation from things we love, having to live with things we don't like, not getting what we want. But then he says the common denominator in all these forms of suffering is something that's less obvious. The five clinging aggregates. What are the aggregates? They're activities. Activities of the body, activities of the mind. They're things we're doing. Habits we've developed. And as with most habits, we tend to cling to these things without really knowing what we're doing. And the Buddhist solution is to learn to know what you're doing, so we, you don't act in ways that are creating unnecessary suffering for yourself, unnecessary suffering for others. So instead of acting with ignorance, we act with knowledge. Same actions. But when they're done with knowledge, they're done more skillfully. And the desires and the intentions that have done with ignorance lead to suffering. Can done with when they're done with knowledge, they can lead to the end of suffering. Of course, the intentions will change when you're aware of what you're doing. Your desires will change when you're aware of what you're doing. This is why we meditate. To see the mind in action. The Buddha gives us a task. 
Try to keep the mind with one object. Relate to the object in a way that's comfortable. For instance, you focus on the breath. Now the breath can come in and out on its own without your paying attention, but now you're going to pay attention to it. And you'll notice as soon as you pay attention to the breath, it's going to change. So you try to notice what kind of breathing would be best. Change it in that direction. This is where you experiment. This is how you begin to learn about the mind. What kind of perceptions do you have of the breath? What kind of beliefs do you have about the breath? What sensations do you associate with the breath? Are those sensations necessary? Because sometimes they're painful, tense sensations that go with your breathing. But they don't have to be there. And yet you allow them to be there because, again, you're ignorant. You don't know what you're doing. You're not paying attention. So now that you're paying attention, try to breathe in a way that feels good. You don't just sit there watching whatever comes up. As the Buddha said, the task of mindfulness, when you put mindfulness in charge, is to give rise to skillful states. They get rid of unskillful states. And if skillful states are there, you try to maintain them. Let them grow. And how are you going to do that? Well, you find that the way you breathe has an impact. The way you talk to yourself will have an impact. The perceptions you hold in mind, the feelings that you focus on, will all have an impact on how you relate to the breath, whether the mind can become calm and have a sense of well-being, happy to be with the breath. In other words, as you focus on getting comfortable with the breath, you're going to begin to notice the mind as well, what the mind is doing. This is the whole point of the meditation. In the beginning, though, give 90% of your attention to the breath. And let the other 10% deal with feelings and mind states. Because you want to give the mind a sense of well-being, a sense of belonging here, a sense of being anchored here. And as you get more and more skillful at this, more and more adept. You then become more sensitive to what the mind is doing. It's like learning how to play a musical instrument. In the beginning, your main concern is just getting the notes right. But as you get more familiar with the notes, you start listening to yourself. And you notice where you're playing well, where you're not playing well. You notice your phrasing. You notice the notes that you emphasize. In other words, you become more sensitive to what you're doing. Less focused on the notes, more focused on playing them well. And in being focused on playing them well, you begin to notice a lot about the mind as it engages with the music. Well, it's the same with the meditation. You learn more about your mind as you get better and better at calming it down. The Buddha is giving you a task. To be calm with the breath. Be centered with the breath. Allow the breath to fill the whole body. Allow a sense of ease with the breathing to fill the whole body. And as you're doing this task, the burdens of the mind get less, and it can watch itself more, see itself more clearly. This is an important principle in the practice, is learning how to reflect on your own actions. Learning how to reflect on the actions of the mind. Someone 
once wrote a letter to a John Foreman person in Singapore who was just getting interested in a John Lee's teachings. He said he was practicing meditation all through the day, trying to see everything as being in constant stressful not self. He watched TV, trying to see things in constant stressful not self. Engaged in his work. And the Buddha told, excuse me, a John Furan told me to write back to the guy and say, don't focus on things outside, focus on what's in constant stressful and not self in your own mind. He said, the problem isn't out there, the problem is in here. You criticize things outside for being in constant, unreliable. But your own mind is in constant, unreliable. That's the big problem. So the Buddha's giving us tools, he assigns a task to get the mind still. He gives the tools of insight to look at our own actions, to see what we're doing and where we're causing harm, where we're causing unnecessary stress and suffering. And how we can change what we're doing. No matter how long you've held to a particular habit, you really see that it's causing unnecessary harm, and it's not necessary. That's the important part. It's not necessary. You don't have to do it. That's when you let go. You brought awareness to what you're doing. And these two things, acting in ignorance and acting in awareness, are are worlds apart. So bring awareness to the mind, bring awareness to the breath. And you create a refuge inside, so even though the mountains are moving in, They don't have to crush the goodness of the mind. They don't have to crush the happiness that you can find. As you get to know the actions of your mind really well. 